gentlemen, welcome to join us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. Tonight we talk about a committee of over 10 pastors and local authorities in Vuri has been put in place that is going to redress the problems plaguing churches in the division. And also in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television, we present to you the list of three dirtiest ministries in Cameroon. That is, of course, a finding that has been carried out by a civil society organization in the only center region of the country. And also we talk sports football. Chelsea signs a one-year deal with the Cameroonian striker Samuel Eto'o. These are headlines, details and more just in a moment. Good evening to you viewers once again. We thank you so much for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. We begin right away in Yaoundé Centre region of Cameroon. The audit bench of the Supreme Court has indicted Sopecam and other public institutions in its report met public yesterday. Uh, Sopecam is said to be involved in a huge financial irregularities in the year 2004 and 2005 respectively. Yaoundé based correspondent Roland Akong put together the following report. The 2011 annual report of the audit bench of the Supreme Court raises many irregularities concerning expenditure operations at the National Publishing and News Corporation, SOPECAM, under the 2004 and 2005 financial years. The document reveals that the management of SOPECAM paid to various personalities generosity and unjustified mission allowances. The Minister of Communication in 2004 and 2005 received 500,000 francs as a monthly allowance for fuel. This allowance without legal basis earned the minister some 12.5 million francs in cash. He is not a board member of SOPECAM. SOPECAM stated it was a humanitarian assistance. 16 million francs was granted to the chairman of the board of SOPECAM for aid and inadequately justified mission allowances. Supecam stated that the chairman of the board of directors had benefited from the aid within the framework of evacuation to Europe for his wife for health reasons. The report also revealed that Supecam made triple undue payment to a supplier, causing the enterprise a total undue payment of 8 million francs. Purchase of equipment without tender, disproportionate increase in personal expenditure, and uncleared advances for customers are some other irregular expenditure operations at Supecam mentioned in the 2011 report of the audit bench of the Supreme Court. Still in relation to the yesterday's report by the audit bench of the Supreme Court in Yaoundé Centre region of the country, the interview that comes up next, the Justice or Justice Waka, that is in that part of the country, questions the use of the audit bench uh, report when the court is unable to place a concrete sanction on the 40 managers. Uh, she spoke to a Yaoundé-based correspondent, Roland Ako. I don't know why Cameroonians will not see sanctions. Because that report already contains sanction. So if you look at that particular judgment, you realize that there are certain heads which were not followed strictly, where the, the expenditure is not sincere, you uh, give mission allowance to somebody who is not entitled to it, or you declare that you have gone on mission. And it is telling you there that this and will cause the accountant to pay back that money. So it's a judgment. In case, we'll, know, we'll know how to get it because it is a civil uh, judgment. We can even go right to your wife and your children if you are not there. As we announced in the headlines, a survey published by ACDIC, that is a civil society organization in Yaoundé Centre region of the country, shows that the ministries of social affairs, finance and secondary education are the dirtiest in the country. Roland Akong visited the ministries and compiled the following report. The Ministry of Social Affairs, the Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Education are the dirtiest ministries in Cameroon. Humiliating and shameful images of advanced state of neglect, mistreatment, 
disregard of state buildings and properties welcomed us at these ministries. At the Ministry of Women Empowerment, this grass could be finding its way into the minister's office. The backyard of the ministry resembles a parking lot for abandoned agri-equipment. At the Ministry of Secondary Education, broken toilets are no-go places. At the Ministry of Finance, toilets have been transformed into bookstores. We learned that there is a budget for the cleaning, upkeep and hygiene of ministries. But such funds reportedly end up in individual pockets, leaving public buildings in a state of disgrace. Abandoned state vehicles, some begging for repairs, others begging to be dislodged, also caught our attention at many ministries. Of what use is the administrative garage? And here in the country's economic capital, Douala, a committee of over 10 pastors and DOs in the Vuri division has been put in place to seek solutions to the problems faced by churches in the division. It was one of the resolutions arrived at today between an association of churches and administrative authorities in the region. Let's have the details of that report with Forhans in Chanji. Before coming to a conclusion to set up the committee, that will henceforth be in charge of regulating the activities and making sure that churches operate according to the law. Members of the different associations of churches and the divisional officer for Wuri engage in a heated debate as to which church is supposed to be closed, which is recognized, and their modus operandi. Baptist invited me that I have a gift that can bless Kamaya should not stay in Mondeba. I cannot stand before the authority and lie. You are lying. You are lying. You are lying. I'm not lying. The STO told them that some of the reasons for the closure of some churches was due to the fact that some were operating illegally, some structures are dilapidated, lack of location and the absence of security measures put in place for the congregation, among others. It was also noticed that some churches are operating under one association but have different styles of worship. Some of the members, even inside the hall, in the case of La Vraie Eglise de Dieu du Cameroon, argued over who has authority to operate, a situation that proved that there is chaos in the sector. And we believe that if there are among us those who are not functioning normally, they will be extirpated, they will be sent out. That one is very clear. We want to assure the Cameroonians that that one will be very done. Some promoters argued that ever since they deposited their documents to seek for authorization, Nothing has been done. On the issue of transforming God's house to commercial avenues, they said that they've never forced any member to pay tight. To solve these problems and reconcile, a committee of over 10 pastors, divisional officers, and the SDO for Wuri have been put in place. They have as tax to gather information concerning the various churches, to follow up the activities, to see that they do what is required of them, and that if they don't function that way, the committee now will be able to give its opinion on their activities before the church is closed down. So we don't want it to look as if it is a... But how soon will the churches that were closed reopened? As soon as possible. The committee members are expected to be on the field this Monday. And we talk about this sad note, uh, without images, two persons have died in a fatal road accident that occurred uh, that was last night, some kilometers from the Ayato target along the Douala Tiko Highway in the southwest region of Cameroon. This is after a Toyota vehicle transporting three persons on board lost control. Some assaulted several times and then fell into a river. The incident left one person equally seriously injured. And free apartments have been demolished. We are back to Yaoundé Centre region of the country in the Mokolo area following an execution of a judicial decision over a land dispute. Many families have been rendered homeless following the demolition exercise and the anti-mobile crime squad of the police was on the spot to quash this order which almost erupted as the angry mob was about attacking the bulldozer. 
that carried out the exercise. We talk about back to school. Hardship is sending many school, many parents as well as uh, school children to the roadside bookshops to prepare for the next academic year that is in less than one week. But the vendors say that they are yet to make more profits due to the late start of the admissions to public schools across the country. Roland Akong tells us more in the following report. Children and parents who are back to school period cannot afford to buy books from bookshops due to the hardship in Cameroon, buy or exchange books at roadside bookshops. In the past years, I used to buy from the library. But this year, things are so rough, very tough, difficult, that if I don't buy in the second-hand shop like this, I will not be able to buy for all my children. We're preparing to go back to school, so things are kind of difficult. To enable us buy our school needs, we have to sell some books. On the other sources of the books, your guess could be as right as mine. Exchanging or selling the books is an arduous task. The person is kind of expensive. We're having additional math books here, economics, and we're seriously fighting with the price or seriously bargaining. How much are you, ex are you expecting from him? I gave him 12 books. I'm expecting at least 8,000 francs best, like he's not willing to sell. 6 5 is really small. The roadside book vendors complained that the business is very slow due to the late admissions into public schools. The minister, that I don't say, we were speaking for the tour of September. Now I don't make business, no business start. That it is only when admissions must have been over next month that they hope to make some brisk business. After September, that time, because that time we were speaking, so we take book list for school. On that note, we have a brief on sports football. JC has reached a one-year deal with the Indomitable Lions captain Samuel Eto. This is coming after he spent two euros with Anzi Makash Kala in Russia. Here, the deal is yet to specify the pay package of Samuel Eto. We shall surely be coming back to that in our subsequent editions. And uh, we take you right away out of our national boundary. Syria's deputy uh, minister says the United States, Britain, and France helped militants fighting against the Damascus government to use chemical weapons. Opposition continue against the U.S. and the Allies' preparations to take action in Syria without the U.N.'s authorization. Let's have details of that report with Franz Brancat. The White House says all options are on the table except one. I want to make clear uh, that the options that we are considering are not about regime change. That's a viewpoint shared by Great Britain. Let me stress to people, this is not about getting involved in a Middle Eastern war or changing our stance in Syria or going further into that conflict. It's nothing to do with that. It's about chemical weapons. Their use is wrong and the world shouldn't stand idly by. The most likely scenario, a few days of targeted airstrikes, like those carried out by NATO in Kosovo in 1999 and Libya in 2011, but of a much shorter duration. The targets, regime military units capable of carrying out chemical weapons. But not everyone is convinced a military response will deter the Syrian government. While the attack last Wednesday killed hundreds, over 100,000 people have already died since the conflict began nearly two and a half years ago. Still in news out of Cameroon, the U.S. has commemorated the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther's historic I Have a Dream speech. President Barack Obama marked the occasion in Washington, D.C. for the same spot or from the same spot at the Lincoln Memorial on the National Mall. Let's have the details once again with Franz Brancat. Back in 1963, 250,000 people came to Washington to hear Martin Luther King demand equality for black Americans. I have a dream. That my poor little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. 
The rally marked a turning point in the civil rights movement, forcing it onto the national agenda. Less than a year later, President Lyndon B. Johnson signed the Civil Rights Act, which outlawed racial segregation. On Saturday, tens of thousands of marchers converged on Washington, D.C., commemorating the 50th anniversary of Martin Luther King's famous speech. The rally, led by King's oldest son, called for action on jobs, voting rights and gun violence. This is not the time for nostalgic commemoration, nor is this the time for self-congratulatory celebration. The task is not done. Their journey is not complete. We can and we must do more. Speakers paid tribute to civil rights leaders for progress over the past five decades, including Barack Obama's election as the first black U.S. president. Obama is to give a speech on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial on Wednesday, where Martin Luther King gave his 50 years ago. A tribute day to Martin Luther King, 50 years after he met his I Made a Dream speech. That does it for this segment of the news. Up next is Talking Point. In the second part of the news tonight, viewers, we talk about the government's crackdown on clandestine churches in the country. Today, a committee was put in place made of over 10 members, that is pastors, divisional officers in the region, and also the senior divisional officer. And I guess tonight we have, first of all, a pastor and also a member of the civil society to tell us about or to get their own reactions as far as the government's decision on Pentecostal churches in the country is concerned. Good evening to you, Pastor or Apostle Bertrand Takwan. You are the pastor of the Holy Place. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Thank you, Madam. And I thank uh, Equinox Television for inviting me uh, at this moment. I should be thanking you for coming. First of all, I should uh, specify that you are, of course, a member of the committee that was created today in the Economic Capital Douala. And just to find out from you, the government's crackdown on illegal churches across the country, what's your reaction as far as that is concerned? Uh, I thank God for the fact that I've been chosen as a member of this committee. And uh, coming to your question, I, I believe the problem is more complex than what we see because when they talk about uh, clandestine churches, uh, it is something to consider more uh, in details because clandestine churches, because of what? They are not having papers, but what we know is that, as we earlier said on other discussion, a child cannot have a birth certificate without being born. Which means that before a church is formed, I mean before a church is authorized, the, that church must exist before. And when we consider all the procedures for opening of churches, we go to the scenario for the questioning and screening. So uh, we believe that the problem is more complex. It what do you mean true. by it's more complex? Yeah, yeah. That uh, 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 is not. There might be some churches that are operating not in conformity with in the conformity, law. but most of the churches, there's a reason why they are there. There's a reason why they are there, and of course, to you, Mr. Benjamin, before a member of the civil society, a reaction on the government's crackdown on alleged clandestine churches across the country. Thank you very much for inviting me. I'm sorry to say that there's nothing complex in this issue. You know, the law is uh, not ambiguous at all. Either you exist legally or you don't exist at all, okay? There should not be any comparison with um, a child or not. We are in a republic which is uh, governed by laws and the law says before a religious association starts its uh, activities, it should be legally recognized. If somebody feels that he wants to start something great for his, um, uh, for, 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 for the, for his Christians, let him 
meet the uh, the conditions, the legal conditions, and nobody will disturb him. We are in a republic, and it is normal that people respect the rules of this republic. So, uh, in my opinion, this operation of uh, cracking down irregular uh, or illegal or an irregular churches is all but normal. It's a bit late because we have been in a situation where uh, people seeing that, considering that there is no control at all, everybody at any part, any corner of this town and of this country will start his church. You make five steps, you see a church. Is it because we are suddenly becoming more and more spiritual or and because you, people know that church has become a business. And to you, Apostle Betran Takwan, it seems like it's more than the issue of legality or illegality. Yeah, coming back to what I said before, you know, uh, if you go, if you, if you are on the field now, you will discover that most of the people who are operating are in one way or another covered because they have uh, authorization i mean from the uh, uh, legal churches so they are they, it's normal for them to operate but coming back to what you said i think and this is something that we are going to work on on it to be sure because when they said the law yes but there are some laws that are with problems like this law uh, uh, Particularly because when you are about to open a church, they will ask you several questions. How many buildings, how many churches, how many members do you have? Where would the members come from if you have not started? It is true that there are some reasons. Maybe as the SDO was mentioning this morning, some churches are not uh, in good houses, which is normal. Some, in some assemblies, there are some problems. And as in it is in every call, there is they are mentioning cases of pastors or churches that are diverting. So those problems are specific problems that can be solved. But it does not mean that uh, revived churches, Pentecostal churches, don't have a reason to exist. I think there is a problem. Mr. Ngwifo, it seems like uh, like uh, the pastor is talking and other men of uh, court that were interviewed by reporters in Yaoundé Center region of the country and also here in the country's economic capital were talking about the violation of the freedom of worship. What freedom of worship? We are in a, we are in a republic. Eh? We are not in... Uh, yes, even in Vatican, they have their laws. We are in Cameroon. And the freedom of worship should operate in a republican structure uh, infrastructure you know you cannot just say okay uh today i have a vision i will start my church and without any respect to the existing law you go and open your church no we accept that people can go and pray where they want what to do what they have to do even in the bible you know jesus used to respect the law of his people or the law of the uh, people in which, with which he was living. So it is now normal to, to the... respect people. You know, if you are in Cameroon, the pastor is, is laughing, but it's very true. You know, it is normal that many people have their right. People have their, um, uh, their, their desire to worship whatever God they, they want. In the, but respect the regulation of the country. That's all. If uh, the, the law says before you operate. And you many, have... many men of God, so many pastors are complaining of the administrative bottlenecks in the compilation of documents as well. They complain that it's a very, very big problem. That one is not even a big problem as compared to the spiritual one. If you cannot respect the law, which is signing papers, making formalities, how are you going to manage people's spiritual life? It becomes a bit suspicious for those pastors. No. Okay. Now, Pastor, yeah. let's. Yeah. Yeah, Pastor. Yeah, no, I sure just too. wanted to react uh, from what he said. Yeah, most of these churches have papers, and even with the avis favorable from the Ministry of then, Administration, then they have no problem. Bon, even though they say they need the presidential decree, 
That is another problem. That's what the law says. Okay, we are not saying no. At our own level, we organize ourselves so that those who can who cannot be patient to wait for the authorization should join with others. But we are surprised that still people are being traumatized. Pastor, do you know why people don't, do not want to join the organized or the legal the, the legal churches? Because it has become a business and everybody, every pastor, every apostle wants to be the CEO of his own business and have the... the, the, no. the, the yeah, and he, uh, manage his own you know, fellows and yeah, we are talking maximum. about we are talking about churches here yeah. and those that are working in conformity, functioning in conformity with the law, mm -hmm. and those that are not in conformity with the law. Yeah, Even at that level, let me tell you, there's uh, a game some churches are playing right now. It means there are churches which are not authorized, which will go and use the name of authorized a church. churches are now. Uh, and just yeah, to find out which, from you, which is a pastor, you are a member of the committee that has been put in place in the economic capital dollar. How do you Ugo, hope to? How are you looking forward to meeting some of these uh, setbacks? No, first of all, we want to churches. thank the government and especially the SDO because this is one of our cry. Personally, I said it in one of the interview in the past. Uh, gathering pastors like this was a good resolution because there is no problem that can be solved without people coming together. And we believe that this commission will do a very serious work. First of all, to be sure that those who are operating churches are really people who deserve that, who are capable. And secondly, to also help in you know, uh, in the procedures, so that because we can't know why is it that. So to the put in place of the committee is very positive. Yeah, and that should be that positive. should that should be a similar thing in other regions across the country. Sure, sure. They to be able to solve have the done problem. A very good job. Thank you so much, uh, Apostle Betran Takwan, for joining us tonight on Talking Point, and we hope to have you some other time again. Thank you. Very and much to you, Mr. Benjamin before we thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you very much. Point. I just want to say that the committee is just a start. What they will produce will be they will be judged on that. Thank yeah. you so much, Mr. Gifu, and to our viewers. We thank you so much for having joined us in this edition of the 6 p.m. newscast on Equinox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Good evening to you once again.